Welcome back to Basics Physics Classroom. So, in the last class, we were learning about reflection, right? So, we learned about a spherical mirror, um, um, concave and a convex mirror, about the magnification, about the linear magnification, and the and the axial magnification, also about the aerial magnification, right? And uh, we also learned about uh, why the name ambulance is actually inverted and everything over there. So, if you have not watched the previous video, do go and watch the, uh, watch the previous video because you need a bit of reflection to understand the next topic for today, refraction. Okay, so let's move on to refraction. So, refraction is actually the phenomenon of bending of light. It's a phenomenon of bending of light when the light moves from one medium to another. Now, this bending of light occurs due to the fact that the speed of light is different in different medium. The speed of light is different in different medium. Suppose in a particular medium, say N1, the speed of light is very large. If in a medium the speed of light is very large, we say that this medium will be optically rarer. Medium will be optically rarer. And in another medium, if the speed of light is small compared to the previous medium, we say that this medium is optically denser. So that is how we classify a medium into denser and a rare medium. The speed of light is less means it is a denser medium. It is more means it is a rarer medium. Okay. So when light is moving from a rarer to a denser medium or a denser to a rarer medium, it bends. So how does this bending take place? Now, suppose the light is moving from a rarer to a denser medium. If the light is moving from a rarer to a denser medium and the angle of incidence is I here, then it will bend towards the normal. It will bend towards the normal. Remember that here R is angle of refraction. For reflection also I actually use the term R, but since I is equal to R over there in reflection, there's no issues right. Now here, I is angle of incidence and R is corresponding to the angle of refraction. So remember that when a light is moving from a rarer medium to a denser medium, it is bending towards the normal. Okay. Now, if it is moving, if the light is moving from a denser to a rarer medium, from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it bends away from the normal. It's actually very easy to remember this. We can just remember this draw, the term draw. Drawing something, draw. Draw means denser to rarer, away from the normal. Denser to rarer, away from the normal. Okay, you can just remember it like that and it will be easy for you. Right, so denser to rarer, it bends away from the normal and if it is from rarer to denser, it bends towards the normal. Okay, now this refraction takes place based on Two laws again. One, we have the Snell's law of refraction. Snell's law. Now, based on Snell's law, we can say that the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to n2 by n1. Now, n2 by n1 is actually known as the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to the medium 1. n2 by n1 is what? The refractive index of medium 2 with respect to the medium 1. So what do you mean by refractive index? Now refractive index is actually a property which depends on the medium. Okay. Now one important thing about refractive index you have to remember is refractive index actually decreases with the increase in temperature. It decreases with the increase in temperature. Okay. Another point is Based on Cauchy's formula, based on Cauchy's formula, we can write mu is equal to a plus b by lambda square plus c by lambda raised to 4. It goes on like that, Cauchy's, and Cauchy's, Cauchy's formula. So based on this, we can say that refractive index depends on the wavelength also, which means if lambda r greater than lambda v, then we can say that refractive index of r should be less than the refractive index for V. 
So for different wavelength, the refractive index corresponding will be different. So refractive index depends on the temperature, depends on the medium, depends on the color or the wavelength. Now the refractiveness n here it denotes the absolute refractive index. What is called absolute refractive index. Now when we are comparing the refractive index of two mediums, say n1 and n2, then we will be using the term the refractive index of 2 with respect to 1 and we call it as relative refractive index. We call it as relative refractive index. Okay. Now, we can write n2 by n1 will be equal to. So, before writing n2 by n1, I'll just tell you what is n. The absolute refractive index n will be equal to c by v. What is n equal to? c by v. What is n equal to? c by v. So here we can write n2 by n1 will be, you know that c is the speed of light. v is the velocity in that particular medium. So here we can write n2 by n1 will correspond to v2 by, sorry, when you take substitute, you will be getting v1 by v2. Or that will be equal to lambda 1 by lambda 3. So, n2 by n1 can be written as v1 by v2 or which is equal to lambda 1 by lambda 2. Okay. So, the first law, Stell's law of refraction says that the sine of the angle of incidence, the sine of angle of refraction is a constant known as a relative refractive index n2 by n1. And the second law, very similar to the law of, uh, second law of reflection again, the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal or like the same plane. The incident, the refracted, and the normal, or lie in the same plane. Okay, so that is about the laws of refraction. Now we have to learn about some special cases related to refraction. Okay, the first thing we are moving on to is to learn about the concept of real depth and apparent depth. Okay, so real depth and apparent depth. Now. Let me consider a situation. So the first situation is there is some water here. I'm placing an object over here. Okay. You might have actually done this experiment uh, yourself in your home and everything. Um, supposing that I take a bucket of water and I place a coin there inside the bucket. Okay. I try to grab the coin. Will you be able to grab the coin at, at the first try itself? Will you be able to do that? Say yes or no. You won't be able to do it. Why? Because, because of the phenomenon of refraction, the coin actually appears to be, appears to be less deep than it actually is. It appears to be higher than its original position and we are actually trying to grab an image of that over there. So because of the refraction, we won't be able to grab the coin at the first try. Okay? So, I have a coin over here. So a person is looking from here. Okay, when you're looking from here, what do you see? At this point, it suffers a bending. So you're actually seeing, you're actually feeling that the object is actually over here. You're actually observing a shift in the position of the object. Suppose the object was originally at a depth h, but you are feeling that the object is at a height h dash. So, because of refraction, there is a shift in the position. Here, h dash corresponds to the apparent depth. And h corresponds to the real depth. h dash corresponds to the apparent depth. And h corresponds to the real depth. Okay? And you can write the refractive index is equal to when the observer is in rarer medium. When the observer is in the rarer medium, the refractive index is equal to real depth by apparent depth. The refractive index is equal to real depth by apparent depth. Okay? And you can write this difference in height. I got D. The shift. D is equal to mu minus 1 by mu into H. Remember that. D is equal to mu minus 1 by mu into H. So when the observer is in the rare medium, refractive index of the medium will be corresponding to real depth by apparent depth. 
So the refractive index this is the refractive index n of the median. Okay. Now let's take another case. Now the first case uh, observer was actually in the rarer medium. Suppose it is a fish looking uh, outside, or it is a um, swimming or swimmer or a diver who is looking outside. In that case, what will be the condition? So the second case, this is the first case. Second case, observer is in denser medium. Observer is in the denser medium. So what will happen? The observer is over here. The observer is over here. Right? And the object is here. So light from the object comes. Light from the object comes. It bends. Rarer to a denser medium. It bends away or towards. Rarer to denser. It bends towards an angle. Which means bending towards an angle. I'll draw it clearly. And more clearly, I'll draw it. I is over here. Okay. So it is bending towards a normal. Now, his line of sight is over here. So he will actually be seeing the object over here. So the actual height of the object was here. But the person inside the denser medium feels that the object is of the side edge dash. Clear? So it appears to be farther away than its actual position. It appears to be farther away than its actual position. All right. So here, in this case, when the observer is in the denser medium, we can write the refractive index n is equal to the refractive index n is equal to apparent depth by real depth. Refractive index n is equal to apparent depth by real depth. And the shift in the or the difference in the height d is equal to mu minus one into h. What is d equal to? Mu minus one into h. Clear? In and out there. So when the object is in the observer is in the rare medium, it is real depth by apparent depth. When the observer is in the denser medium, it is apparent depth by real depth. Please remember these two conditions. Very, very important from your exam point of view. All right. Okay. Now let's move on to the next application. And that will be covered in the next video. So I hope you have understood till this. So today what you have discussed in diffraction is about Snell's law of refraction, about the refractive index. And also we have discussed about real depth and apparent depth. I hope it is clear. And the next video will be discussing about glass lab. Okay, so if you have any doubts, please do comment below and please make it a point to put a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Places with Classroom. So, thank you.